Okay, so we have on the show today two of my friends who also happen to be um, Velvet Machete Leadership Academy certified leaders, uh, graduates of the academy. They're in the Velvet Machete Leadership Society. I've known them for years. I think y'all were actually my second interview ever when I wrote the Bombshell Businesswoman. So um, it was my first conference and super exciting. And we've stayed connected ever since because they're amazing. So I want to introduce to you uh, Donna Fain and Kay Suarez. And um, Donna, can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and why you were interested in taking the Fascination Advantage Assessment? Yes, so I work for a large corporation um, for over 20 years, and then I also have a side hustle where I interview authors um, and do book reviews. I have a book review website, and I just love learning more about myself and how to communicate with others, and this looked like a great um, assessment where you can figure out like how better to communicate, how do people see you, and then how do you communicate better. Awesome, and what about you, Kay? Tell us all about you. Okay, so my name is Kay Suarez. Uh, I also work for a large corporation and my side hustle is real estate investment, investing. And um, like Donna, I, I wanna really understand how people see me. And so that's why I picked up and did this assessment. So looking forward to hearing what you have to say, Amber, about us. Okay. So here's, here's the dealio. Um, they both have the same fascination archetype. Okay. But they're, they're different people and they show up differently. And because I've been able to work so closely with them, I would not have personally guessed that they would be the same because of, because of all the little nuances and how they both show up. So what we're going to do today is unpack how you can have the same personality type, but really truly understanding the deeper dive so that you can position yourself as unique. So the creator of the Fascination Advantage Assessment is Sally Hogshead. She just was on um, the Today Show talking about the um, Super Bowl commercials because she's that level of an expert on, on branding. And so um, I'm fortunate to have been mentored by her and be able to work with her and be one of her um, senior consultants, if you will. Um, for this program or the um, the assessment and the implementation. So what I'm going to do is share screen and we're going to dive into their personalities and, the, and I haven't given them any hints. So this is going to be fun. Okay. So welcome to the maestro. So this means out of the seven different advantages, um, which are innovation, passion, power, prestige, trust, mystique, and alert, they scored highest in power and prestige, which means that power, which is the language of competence, is their primary language. They can speak it easily. It takes no effort for them to show up with that language of competence. That I completely see in both of y'all. Their secondary language is prestige, which is the language of excellence. So that is, it's, it's very easy for them to pull that in. It doesn't take a lot of effort. So when they show up with the language of confidence and the language of excellence, it is no mistake that you are both in kind of like the project management world of, of corporate America. This is how they show up. This is how they influence and this is how they fascinate. Now the fascination advantage assessment is, it's not, a tool like Myers-Briggs where, um, where it helps you psychologically see the world, it shows you how the world sees you at your best. And when you understand what that personal brand is, when, when you understand what other people are saying about you when you're not in the room, now you can leverage that information to become more influential. So that's what we're going to dive into today. Looking at the maestro, so, and y'all jump in and at any time, um, Donna and Kay both show up with these particular um, adjectives, but obviously in practice, this is how they are seen. Ambitious, focused, confident, uncompromising, and formidable. How do y'all feel about that word formidable? <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> but you have Kay. <laughs> Donna, what about you? <laughs> 
<laughs> I was thinking that that might be true. My team may have used, used that. Uh-huh. Yeah. So when you think about the maestro, it's somebody who is going to come in. I mean, just think about the, the, the maestro. It's the person who is leading all of the different instruments, right? It's the person who knows all of the music and they don't have to understand how to play each instrument. They need to be able to bring all of those instruments together to be able to perform at a high level. So each of these assessments breaks down the highest and best use and then what's not the highest and best use. So I won't read everything um, because people can read it on the screen, but some of these things that I like to point out is you have very high standards for not only yourself, but your coworkers. So can you talk a little bit about that, how that shows up as you fascinate? Yeah, I think it's whether we're leading a team or we're working on project management, we do expect a lot from others. And so how do you, how do you do that? So also in the concept of velvet machete, right? So the machete cuts to the chase, the velvet wraps the message in a way that's, that's appealing to the audience. It would be very easy for the maestro to go, to go a little heavy on machete, not so much on velvet. And yet y'all balance that flawlessly, at least in my observation. So what do you do to, to help ensure that you're, you've got that balance? I think part of it's experience, because I bet, you know, if you looked at my leadership child 10 years ago, maybe I was not as good at that. Uh -huh. um, so I think now it's more experience and understanding that everyone has something going on in their life. So you kind of look now to, yeah, I expect you to have, you know, I have high standards, but if you can't meet it, let's talk about why. Yeah. Okay. So for me, it's word choice. So, you know, I want to say one thing, but I've um, taught myself kind of how to think through it and say it in a way, in a language that they can accept it. So that's one thing. The second thing I'd say is I use myself as an example first in my conversation. So here's what I'm going to do. And then here's what I expect you to do kind of thing. And that seems to have worked um, well, but I'm kind of like Donna, like if you would have looked at me 10 years ago it probably looked totally different than what it looks like today. But, you know, it's just a maturity over time and, and learning to read people and understand what they need and where they are um, and then make that adjustment in my language and, and how, I, how I ask for things. Yeah. So again, although we are understanding how we fascinate, you also have to understand, okay, this is my language. I speak the language of confidence. I speak the language of excellence, but you need to be able to modify your message without changing who you are or how you show up, but you do need to modify your message as it relates to the people that you're trying to influence because they speak a different language. And I think both of y'all have learned that lesson along the way, which has strengthened you. So, um, okay. So, um, areas that are not great for the, the uh, maestro, I think one that I'd like to pull out for y'all is, um, not putting you on a professional treadmill. You need new things to conquer. You need adventure. And so I, and I find it interesting that you both also have side hustles. So you have like these big important jobs. You've been with this company for eons. And then you have this other thing that you're doing too, because of course you do, because you're a maestro. So can you talk a little bit about that? Kay, you go first this time. Okay. So uh, the role that I'm in, in, in right now is really, um, you know, it lends itself well to my personality because it's more of a um, entrepreneurial role within the company. So I own, I own a piece of the business and I'm responsible for a hundred percent of the delivery. So I think that's been helpful in the assignments that I've, um, been a part of over the years. Um, my favorite ones have had that component. My least favorite ones have been where I've kind of been, um, put in a box and not allowed to really spread my wings like I want to. And, and those haven't happened very often because I know who I am and what I want. And so I try not to get in those situations. But um, outside of work, I still need that achievement of completing things because at work, things take a lot longer than I would like them to. And so I need that, like, I need that um, endorphins from 
being able to complete something. And so I think that's part of the reason why I pretty much have always had some kind of side hustle um, from the time that I graduated from college and started working in corporate America. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that because that's that ambitious piece, which is the first adjective. Donna, what about you? You know, it's, it's funny in hindsight, I look at some different positions I've had um, at the current company I'm at and they were setting up new departments. And I think after I did it for a while, people realized that's where I did thrive. I love, you know, um, being able to just start something from the ground up and not just be on the treadmill. It's interesting when I first read that, I'm like, hmm, what does that mean? And then I was like, oh yeah, that's exactly what I don't like. Yeah. So can you unpack that a little bit and, and how you, um, how you avoid that, how you have, like, even if you get something at work that feels a little repetitive, how do you, how do you position yourself so that or how do you look at it differently so that you can fascinate in the way that you do? Because we're talking about, for those following along, we have to bubble wrap the areas that we're not exception that are not exceptionally helpful in terms of our personality. So how do you bubble wrap that? You know, I think it's helpful because one, almost in today's environment, no day is the same now. I do support some finance projects that may not be the sexiest kind of projects you're going to work on. Right. <laughs> so, so, you know, I would say that you have to kind of find um, your value that you're adding and find the value you're adding to the company. So you have to sometimes go out and say, why am I doing this? How am I making a difference? Um, yeah. To kind of help you there. And sometimes it's the people you work with, they add, um, you know, the flavor to the position, even if it's not the day-to-day -day work. So, so find the areas where you can double down and, and make and amplify that so that you can survive the other pieces. Okay. Let's break down each area. So they're both highest in power. And when we get to analytics, this is measured differently. So you're, you both scored first in power, but that doesn't mean you scored the same. So we're looking at power in the, in, in, in the population and about 13% of the people who took the fascination advantage assessment use power as a primary advantage. So that's not a huge percent. So this is, you're, you're in a smaller group here. Um, things that would describe you enjoy leading projects or project managers, that's surprising. Um, easily wins buy-ins of teams. Um, Kay, you had a massive victory lately, and and we, you know, we we can talk a little bit about it or a lot about it. Um, but your ability to buy somebody in because you did the work on the front end before you went to influence was was pretty compelling for you to be able to move a project forward. So I know we, we don't really unpack that publicly, but can you just talk a little bit about how you used your fascination advantage or how you learned from your own self-awareness, how did you use what you knew about you in order to influence somebody else by being able to see what they might need? That was a little bit of a convoluted question. Are you following me? <laughs> I think so. So, um, it, it was um, an issue with one person that wasn't buying into the um, story that we needed to tell for this current program that we were working on. And it was important that we tell this, this, this story and the points in the story um, because it was a matter of whether we would continue with the program or not. And um, it, I just spent a lot of time thinking through um, what that person needed to get to the point where they could accept that. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we were, we were kind of like fussing a little bit over one slide. Um, but, you know, I took the time and we worked through it and it took longer than I wanted it to, but I needed him to buy in. And so in the end, the slide stayed in and we still had a discussion of that slide but it, you know, it was taking time to think through what he needed, how I could help him get to the point where he needed to be. And, um, and with your help, because, you know, we had a couple discussions about it and how to use my fascinate 
um, you know, power and prestige in that situation to move him along. Yeah. So what she did beautifully was she, she did not change who she was. She still showed up with her personal brand, still with that power, still with that prestige. But what she did is adapted the message in a way that was meaningful and compelling to the person she needed to influence. So again, as we're looking at how we fascinate, that does not be like, well, I show up this way and that's it and you better like it or not. You show up authentically as you because that's how you're going to most naturally be able to connect with other people and, and, and communicate. But you always have to keep in mind, well, what's the language this other person is speaking? So um, quick example, and I, I'm sure I've shared this with y'all, but I was working with, um, a fortune 100 company and i'm very low in trust which is the language of stability uh, but i knew in a corporate entity like this that trust is typically pretty high in terms of how they show up and i knew that as an external speaker i probably did not need to be in the room when they were talking about financials and so they're like oh no we love you amber you're here all the time it's fine you can just wait in the room we, we don't want you to sit out in the lobby and wait on us and i was like i so appreciate it. I think it's in your best interest for me to not do that. I speak the language of passion, the language of relationship. So yes, I want to be in the room. <laughs> like I want to be with everybody, but because I knew they spoke the language of trust and the, from a corporation perspective, it's a trust organization. I was very careful to use that language. So long story short, too late, as usual with me, passion advantage. Um, they had a global senior vice president in that room who freaked out that they had an external speaker coming in because they were talking about financials. And so the person came out to me later and was like, I'm so glad that you insisted to sit in the lobby because I would have been in so much trouble. So you, it's not just about, I'm still going to show up as Amber. I still showed up as I want to be your friend and we're kumbaya we're all on this together, but you always have to think about the impact on the other person. So excellent um, example there. And hopefully my tie in was, was helpful to viewers and listeners. Let's go back to your report. So we are primary in power and then secondary in prestige. So Donna, you have recently been celebrated because of your work anniversary. You hit quite the milestone. And, um, and I think that is a great time to understand how much you've earned respect because your team behind your back as appropriate <laughs> reached out to, they all came together and put videos together to talk about how you show up and what you mean to them and what you've done for the company and for your team. So can you talk a little bit about that? Because it's not often that we get to understand exactly how, how much we've earned respect. You're right. And usually it's when you're retiring, you know, and that's what I thought was so beautiful because it does totally motivate you, you know, to keep going. And I was, I told him I could retire at this point and be totally happy. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, because I think sometimes we, it is part of who we are. So it's, it makes us feel good. And like, that's where um, I, you know, I guess fill my bucket, if that's the right word. So it was, um, it was nice to know that it meant so much to them too, because I do it because I enjoy helping people. And, you know, I was reading through the fascinate and I could definitely see myself in several of the um, descriptions and that's just something I enjoy doing. I just, and you know, I think when it comes so natural, you just assume everyone else is like that. Uh -huh. And so it's nice when they didn't take it for granted, like that the, the right. they, they did appreciate it. And I, and I love that how overwhelming the response was because not everybody gets that and not everybody needs that. So that's the other thing is understanding this, this is how we influence, but it's also what we personally need. So as a passion personality, I mean, I, I just want to hug you guys. Like, I hate that you're, <laughs> I hate that you're through the screen. Um, and, and I get so excited every time I, I get to see you that's a need of mine. And so because you are achievers, a need of yours is for that to be recognized. And that doesn't mean that you, um, it's an, an ego inflation thing It's that just helps keep you going. It fills your bucket, like you said. So, 
um, again, it's important to understand it about each other. And the more you understand yourself, you know, I say this all the time in Velvet Machete, the more you have self-awareness, the better you are at being able to see and harvest the greatness in others. So it's, it's mm -hmm. very critical that we, we continue to explore. You know, okay. Amber, I'll jump in here just yeah. real quick. Someone even did that to Kay recently. They just sent her a note because she wasn't able to make a meeting. And they're like, we really missed you tonight. Yeah. Wow. And, you know, even sometimes just, you know, just little things like that. I just encourage people when you feel that urge to do something like that, to do it because it does matter to people. It always matters. And especially now the psychological strain that we're all under in light of COVID and economics and just a crazy world and social issues and everything else, uh, reaching out to somebody in, you know, you could say your love language or how they fascinate or, or whatever is, is definitely, I think we need more of that human touch now more than ever. Um, so how are we on competitive you guys feel like you're competitive i have my assumptions about you or i have my observations about you but i'll let you go first <laughs> uh i do like to win when I'm, <laughs> when I'm playing like card games and things like that um i used to like to win like in everything but i think i've kind of scaled back like um my need to win at work um my need to win in relationships, but, you know, keep it to things like card games or competitive things um, versus in those other areas. Um, and the reason why I've, I've had some bad burns for being competitive in those areas, not to say that I'm, uh, I, I prefer to uh, collaborate. So that's um, assessment that I did it showed that I was competitive, but I was also collaborative and collabor collaboration kind of beat out competitiveness a little bit. So my go-to is like collaboration. Um, but like, if I have to, I'll get in there and, and be competitive when I need to be. Yeah. What about you, Donna? Yeah, I think mine is very situational because honestly, when you put me into some stupid game, I really don't care. And yeah. I'm <laughs> Same. Like, I'm like, like whatever. Done with this. <laughs> um, but you know, Kay and I could tell you so many stories. Like we collaborate so well. We look for reasons to do things together. Um, yeah. And you know, I think for me, it's I, I just take it very situational. On you know, things that are important to me, I want to win at. Otherwise, yeah. I'd love to collaborate. Yeah. The thing that I have observed about both of you. Um, and I do, of course, the collaboration, y'all do stuff outside of work and you do, um, you invest in youth. I mean, you've taken so much of what you've learned over the years and fed the, the next generation, which is beautiful. But what I know about you is that um, you are so competitive with yourself. You yeah. are your yes. biggest competitor. <laughs> yeah, that I would agree with. 100%. You do not rest on your laurels at all so and it's interesting when you're talking about um your double trouble so the the double trouble of of um prestige for example is um you become cold um arrogant superior and then your power you become the aggressor very dominant um, domineering and so when you double down in your area maybe you get backed into a corner and you're and you're using too much of your advantage those type of things happen so what i'm hearing you say is okay that might have been me in the past but i have some learned behaviors now that supersedes what my natural tendencies could be in the raw 20-year-old mm -hmm. passion-driven Amber and 41-year-old <laughs> passion-driven two different animals. So um, let's go back to your assessment here and carry on. Okay, so we've covered your top two. Um, now let's talk about your, your specialty adjectives. So these are just things that you can use in your, your LinkedIn profile as you're positioning yourself on a resume, um, when you're promoting yourself, um, like your, you know, Donna, you have a personal brand with your, your side hustle and even Kay, as you're 
as you're doing different things and you're maybe operating in, um, whether it's your corporate world or your, um, real estate world, just, you know, saying like, we're very ambitious or, you know, Donna, when you're talking about you, um, more than a review, we're very focused and we're uncompromising on the quality of, of the, uh, interviews that we do. Um, it, you know, and this word formidable, it just keeps coming up for me because every word is, has connotations. I love this word. I want to be described as formidable, but we know that when you show up in a powerful way, it can be intimidating to people who have not stepped into their power. And so mm -hmm. th there's, there's certain words that you want to be careful about how, and when you use them. And so, um, as, as you're developing your, um, your anthem, if you will, you can take one of these specialty adjectives and then take the result that you actually get. And for an example, for you, if we took ambitious and we know that one of the things that maestros are absolutely great at getting is results, you can say, when I show up to a meeting, when I show up to my side hustle, when I show up on a project, when I show up in my personal life, you know that I will deliver ambitious results. So we don't have time for that on this particular call, but we will build out your anthem after the fact. So let's look next at your analytics. This is my favorite page. I complete, I don't even look at the cover page. When I get somebody's um, report back and I'm going over it with them, I don't even care what their archetype is. I wanna see this page. Because as you can see, you both are the maestro, but your advantages are broken down in different ways. So these are the nuances of how you show up differently. So I'm looking at Donna is 20%. So she is 2% higher than her second advantage. So that is definitely, you have a primary and you have a secondary. Your go-to is power, your next go-to is prestige. We go and look at Kay, she is 17, 17, 17, which means there is, there is an eighth of a percent tiebreaker question that broke those three up into the order that they are. So we're looking at Kay who, is a little bit more about um, the language of the details and then her power and her prestige are right there all together. So she is confidence, excellence, details. That's how she shows up. What she does is she shows up with confidence. How she does it is by pursuing excellence and why she does it is in pursuit of the details. Does that fit right with UK? Yes. Make it. Every yep. I's dotted, every T is crossed. Yep. That's me. Yeah. Okay. And then if I'm looking at Donna, I'm going to say, just, okay, well, that's not me. <laughs> no, it's not you. No, it's not. No, no, no. But what is why you? we collaborate well together. <laughs> so perfect. Right. Because you, you show up confidently. That's how people see you and, um, and how you do it just like, Hey, is you do it with a, a spirit of excellence and why you do it is to stabilize things, to make sure that everything is the way that it needs to be consistently. And that's not saying that you're a consistent person necessarily. It's just that the pursuit of stabilizing things is, is more your jam. Is that, does that fit right for you? I'm going to have to think about that. That's okay. interesting. Yeah. So that's the prestige and trust there. So, yeah. So the trust piece is trust is a language of stability. So when I think about trust, mm -hmm. I think about banks. We don't want them being innovative with our money. We want them to, <laughs> to do, to be consistent, to show up the same way. When I think about how you show up for me, that this remember this is different than behavioral. And so, for, if you're if you're new to me and you're watching or you're listening, I use different assessments for different functions. I do not believe that there's a one-stop shop assessment for everything. So, when we're talking about our communication style and how we influence, fascinate is the way to go. You also have your predictive index behavioral profile, which is what do I need in a work environment and how does that drive my behavior. So I believe that both, both of y'all are low D, right? On the predictive index. Uh, Kay, not... you're a, you're a venturer. So I know you, you have a cutback yep. D, 
Donna, what's, do you remember your profile? I, you know, I don't. Okay. Well, I'll have to look at it. So there's a difference between I'm showing up and I'm fascinating and I'm communicating in a way that provides stability. And then behind the scenes, how I like to function is dot every I and cross every T and have the same way that I do things um, every single day. I take the same way to work. I, you know, I eat the same thing on Tuesday nights. Like that's different than how I fascinate. So we can offline and dig a little bit deeper into this. Um, but your alert is also at 15%. So in your work environment, in the language of details, do you prevent problems with care? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I always like to work with people who have attention to detail. Yeah. yeah. I, I seriously, I hire for that many times. So let's take a look though. So power 20%, alert 15%. So there's a significant drop. That is not how you fascinate. That is something that you can recruit and pull up, but it's not your go-to. So you bubble wrap with people who are higher in alert. K alternatively does not need to bubble wrap that area because it's, it's how she fascinates. It's at the top. So again, it might be your third or it might be in the mix, but that doesn't necessarily, I mean, you've got quite the spread between your top and, and that middle. So then we, we go down, um, passion is a little bit higher in K. So um, that's the language of relationship. It's really about the five senses. Um, you know, how does, how does this experience feel and taste and touch and all that kind of stuff? I've seen Kay's office. I see your twinkle lights. I see you, Kay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so that's an expression of, of that passion. And then innovation is lower for both of y'all. Um, and then here's the difference too, is um, you are dormant in mystique, Donna. And K, you are dormant in trust. So where, where Donna might put a little more emphasis in her day-to-day and -day ensuring there's stability, if you are trying to introduce stability, you might be a little more on the struggle bus. So let's, let's talk through that real quick um, because I don't want it to make it sound bad. I'm lower in trust too, which means you do not want me walking in and leading my influence with, um, I'm going to make this all be very stable because I'm high in innovation. I'm like, let's get out of the box. What, what can we do different? We got to change something and then we're all going to get bought into this change and we're going to drive results forward. That's why people hire me. Donna has the ability to show up and say, I'm going to stabilize this. And people will be like, okay, because that's natural for her. If Kay showed up, they'd be like, whatever, Kay, you're... <laughs> You're always coming up with new ideas. There's, you want to do the same thing we did last year? That's not K. It would be awkward for you. So if, if this fits right, I should say that part. Um, how would you feel if I said, I'm going to give you a project and I want you to solve the problem and you can't do anything new. You have to only do what we've always done before and lead that. How would you feel? So I would not like that. <laughs> Uh, because you know even though like um the you know even though my work sometimes is like that there's still room for creativity but like i have had assignments where i've totally been locked down like that and i i just i do not like it at all and it's just it's not it's not healthy for me <laughs> let's just put it that way and you feel like you're in quicksand right like stuck yeah yeah yep and your energy depleted. It mm -hmm. doesn't increase your energy, it decreases your energy. Yeah. Yeah. And Donna, we share the same dormant mystique. We don't need to be at a poker table together. <laughs> we would suck. <laughs> <laughs> so Donna, if I said, I want you to go and I, I want you to close this multi-million dollar deal and you're going to have to negotiate. So don't let them know that we can actually give them this, 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 and this. Just kind of let, feel them out and see how they respond and then come back maybe the next day with the rest of the facts. How would, how would you feel if you had to be put in that situation? 
Yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to do it very well. <laughs> And I, you know, I have been told that you can read my <laughs> expressions very well. I, I was telling Kay earlier, she is way better at that than I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Donna, your face is telling on you. <laughs> exactly. But so, so to me, um, that is something that is endearing about you because for what I want in, in relationship is authenticity I want somebody to shoot me straight. I don't want to guess where I sit with you because I'm dormant in mystique. So I'm going to tell you, of course, that's where the velvet machete comes in again. You can't have too much machete. You've got to wrap it in the velvet. But how does your team perceive you in terms of, do can they trust you to be right with, to just tell them what it is? Yeah. And I think they do appreciate that, you know, especially in our corporate environment, they appreciate the fact that I will share everything I possibly can. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think, and that's how I want to be led. Like I want my boss to share everything they possibly can. And so that mm -hmm. is important to me. Yeah. So we very much value transparency. And so if you work for somebody who's low in mystique or dormant in mystique, you're going to find that transparency. If you work for somebody like Kay, which is low in trust, then you better get used to the fact that things are going to frequently change. That's going to be part of your work experience. Um, but because Kay has, you know, the, the high in, in power and prestige, she's not going to just change the game she's going to make sure that you're empowered to do it. And she's also going to make sure that there's a benchmark to ensure that you're doing it in a way that it, where you're going to win. And Donna is going to shoot you straight and she's never going to pull any punches, but she's going to support you through empowering you and making sure that you're stabilizing the environment and, um, and that you end in excellence, you get to win. So does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go back here. All right. So we talked about dormant already. Um, dormant <laughs> mystique, you don't hide your emotions or your opinions. You persuade others by being straightforward and open. Um, people always know where they stand with you. Dormant and trust. You have an entrepreneurial approach to your career. This is so you. Um, at work, you dislike falling into ruts or performing the same duties every day. You intuitively know how to persuade others through your self-expression and enthusiasm. Um, you're a brainstormer, such a brainstormer. Um, you like to explore and, um, you're, and people are attracted to your expressive and curious nature. So again, these are the areas we need to bubble wrap. <laughs> so what, whatever you're low in, whatever is not helpful for your personality, it's helpful to hire to offset that um, or to pull in other advantages to kind of help you move past that if you have to show up in this area. Um, but we try to avoid it because as Sally says, you, you want to become more of who you already are um, and different is better than better. So with both of you being so high in prestige in the, in the language of excellence, it could be easy to say, well, we just need to be best at this. But with both of y'all, as you step into more of who you are, it's about differentiating yourself through, through these, these nuances, if you will. Amber, I'm thinking I really could have used this in my team. 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. I love doing this in teams. You, you can create a heat map. You can see where you're really heavy. And, and then again, where you are dormant and as a team, you can have a team language. But I think too, you know, we've kind of talked about how we have been able to develop my facial expressions or how I would have communicated. I do know the, to bubble wrap them now. You right know, before when I was maybe unhappy with someone's performance, it may have been said a little bit stronger than it needed to be just because I hadn't learned, you know, enough maturity to kind of bubble wrap that. Yeah. And I, and I think that's what we really all need to embrace is you are who you are. You were created the way that you were meant to be. And so when you're talking about bubble wrapping, it's not, that is not hiding who you are. It's about acknowledging in this particular circumstance, this is not helpful for me. One thing that I've learned, and I'm sure y'all have observed over the years, is because I'm dormant and mystique, I get really excited about my ideas and I want to tell everybody about them. And then it's like, okay, well, now 
something happened and now it's going to be three months before we can actually do that. And so I've learned to not announce things until the full plan is baked out and we can put it on a timeline and it's going to happen. Um, not always, but I'm, I'm way better about that now. Um, so as you've, as you've noticed, I, I would be interested because you all are so close now that we've unpacked, like, okay, you're both maestros, but Kay shows up this way with her analytics and or the, the results of her analytics and Donna does. Kay, what do you see in Donna that is different than you? Um, well, like she said, I am more of the detailed person. Um, and so when we work together, um, that's, you know, like I know that I'm supposed to be the detailed person and, you know, that's the role that I play. And she's like, she is um, more, um, I would say, like st strategic um, in, in the whole thing. So it's the idea um, and the strategy. Um, we both do that, but, but when it comes to like actually putting the details together, I'm doing the details and she's doing more of the out front work, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. um, around that. So Awesome. And Donna, what do you see in Kay that's different than you? She has better facial expressions. And <laughs> <laughs> we send her out first. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, but Kay will keep me from running off the cliff um, because I would be just excited and I'm ready to go. And she's like, okay, let's think about that, you know, and let's, let's get some of the details so that we know it's the right direction. Um so yeah, that's why we just collaborate so well together. I mean, and I think maybe because we do know each other's strengths and our own strengths and weaknesses. And so we're like, it, it just works. Yeah. yeah. So typically there, there are certain advantages that have the potential for conflict if there is not self-awareness around it. And one that I've noticed a lot in organizations is if I'm high in innovation, I am not a fan of having to work with somebody high in alert because innovation wants to change things. They want to try new things. They don't want old killjoy alert who's preventing problems with care to bust up their party. But what I've learned, again, self-awareness, maturity, uh, not being in the raw, having some learned behaviors, is that if I'm an innovation person, I want an alert person. And I've said this before in, in the academy, I am naturally inclined, and Donna, you are too. Let's go jump off the cliff. It's going to be fun. And Kay's going to show up and be like, fantastic. Um, let's do, first of all, did you put your parachute on? Yeah. You, you did. Okay, you got that far, so that's good. Did you do the 10-point check on the parachute to ensure it's going to open when you jump off the cliff? And we're right. like, don't spoil my fun. I'm already running. So that's, that's, that is no self-awareness. Self-aware, mature people with innovation are going to look at Kay and be like, oh my gosh, thank you for saving me. Yes, mm -hmm. let's stop. Thank you for doing the 10-point check. This is super helpful. And so it's the yin and the yang that really, as you both beautifully do, support each other. Mm -hmm. And again, passion, big passion personality, and then mystique, quiet mouse, the language of listening, who's going to observe in a meeting and not necessarily speak in a meeting, those two can really be allies because the observer can really pick up on body language and, and listen for things that a passion personality is going to talk right over. They can collaborate behind the scenes. The passion personality can be the mouthpiece and the mystique person can be like the investigative person to help create the, that communication strategy. So I think you two are quite the pair, but y'all know that. <laughs> Is there anything that you want to offer to our viewers slash listeners before we stop the podcast and offline a little bit behind the scenes as it relates to how you fascinate or, or what you've learned about really studying yourself through assessments or, or anything like that, that self-awareness journey? Well, I definitely am still on the self-awareness journey. So I don't think you ever finish that journey you're always learning new things about yourself and um it's so i hate to use the word but it's so fascinating <laughs> that we can still learn things about ourselves no matter what and this year i've been doing a lot because my my word for the year is mindset so this falls right into that whole thing about like 
um, you know, like, how am I using my mind? Like, how am I showing up? Like, and, and just becoming more and more self-aware. I'm like, I feel like I'm more, you know, like I'm gaining more experience um, than I expected um, as I travel through life. So I think it's just like a continuous journey that, that we take and we'll take until we leave this earth. Yeah. Well, you never get there. It's an ongoing mm-hmm. journey. You university figuring out you yeah. <laughs> who changes and evolves. So it's always exciting. <laughs> Donna, what about you? You know, I just encourage people, like I've mentioned before, I just wish I had learned so much of this earlier in my career because how you interact with people and how you know yourself it can just make such a difference in your interactions and your ability to influence and to own it, you know, own ton of, to your point, Amber, that you mentioned earlier, we are who we are and own that, but then bubble wrap what you need to, you know, and, and I'm a firm believer. I've heard you talk about, I think it was um, the Nike commercials, like they target, you know, their advertising in their emails to the soccer mom, to the professional athlete, but they're still who they are. And that's what I just loved, you know, to tell people is be who you are, but learn how to be the best you in each of those situations. You know, you'll end up winning in the end. Yeah. As both of you have, because you both have stellar careers, um, longstanding um, tenure and respect in a giant organization, plus you're successful on your own um, side hustles and adventures that you do. So I just, I'm, I'm so appreciative that you're sharing your, your journey or a piece of your journey with everybody who's watching. Um, and we will definitely put, um, Donna will put more than a review in the show notes so they can check that out. And Kay, I don't know if you want us to share your, um, real estate adventures in the show notes, but just maybe some social media or other ways that people can reach out to you. Thank you for being, I don't feel like it's vulnerable for you guys, but it is technically being vulnerable. You're sharing your personality, like for everybody who's ever wanted to watch. So thank you for that. They're like, we're maestros, whatever. (laughs) Bring it. (laughs) Which is why I knew I could ask y'all. If you were a mystique person, I'd be, "Mm, yeah, we'll just do this privately. So um, anyways, make sure that you subscribe no matter where you're watching or you're listening. Um, If you are listening on your favorite podcast app, then um, please leave us a rating and review. And um, and if you are interested in... um, books and authorship and and reviews and all that kind of stuff, which if you're a leader, you absolutely should be. That's a part of going to U University is learning how you learn and what you need to learn. Um, Donna has some great content there. So you want to make sure that you follow, rate, and review her as well. So thank you, ladies and everyone else. We will see you on the next episode. Thank you for tuning in. Mentioned resources can be found at amberhurdle.com. Be sure to leave a rating and review in your favorite podcast app and subscribe so you never miss an update. As always, thank you to The Coup for our intro and outro music. See you next time.